And so you want to have that constant communication, a constant communication cadence with your team of business bankers. That's how you should see them. That's how I like to describe them to our clients that we're working with is, hey, you're building out your team of business bankers. We're, we're helping you do this. And so one of the things that we want you to do is we want to help you set up your quarterly business reviews so that when you're going in there, number one, they have the data that's going to equal to more dollars. And then number two, you're also guarding yourself or, or guarding yourself, I should say, from getting the capital that you already have access to from getting that slashed because that happens quite a bit. And then the last thing that this does, which I love, is that when you're going through that quarterly business review and there's an upward trend, you start getting access to financial products or funding products that aren't regularly, what we say, marketed or placed out there, televised. And so you kind of start backdooring your way into more funding, which means there's less competition that you have to go up against inside of that same funding pool, which is fantastic. Next up is credit allocation. This is going to be the process of adjusting the amount of credit available within a credit account. So I want to give you a very real, uh, you know, very much so real, real scenario. That's a lot to say. An example. So credit line A has 10K. Credit line B has 5K. So let's say that you shift 5K from A to B. You now have a total credit line of, of 10K on credit line B. And then obviously credit line A is going to be A. Now, if you're wondering, Irv, why, like, why would someone even do this? You know, how does this actually help you make more money in your business? Like, you know, what, what's the point of it? Well, first off is you're extending the period of either no or low interest. So you actually have access to cheaper money. And so if you have, for example, two Chase Business Inc. cards, if we're kind of staying in that line with Chase, one Business Inc. card, you got it as soon as you started the business. The second business in card, you got it maybe seven months down the road. Well, guess what? With the business in card, at least at the time of this recording, it's 12 months of no interest on any purchases. But now you have on one of the cards, you have about four and a half, five months left before that interest starts to kick in every month. But for the new product, that window reset. And so now you have a brand new 12 month clock. So what you can do and what some people do is let's say if you're going to make a big purchase and you want to take advantage of no interest for that extended period of time, you transfer, again, if we're using that example of the 5K and the 10K just for, to work with small numbers, is you now have, instead of just having $5,000 that you were going to use for 12 months for like a big, big purchase, you now have access to $10,000 that you can use for that bigger purchase, which again, it's cheaper money and that's just being smart with capital allocation, which is a skill that you want to have as an entrepreneur anyways. Number two is this is going to allow you to continue accessing credit even after an account closes. This is a, you know, a nice, smooth way of you extending that relationship so they can continue to use the, the funding products. And then number three is you're going to maximize the points and the offers. Because if you think about it, if you're going to make a big, a big purchase and you were going to, let's say, pay half of it in cash, and then the other half was going to be with 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 let's say the the business the business credit card, then you're missing out on about ten thousand dollars worth of points and offers, which could amount into a significant amount of what we call travel rewards. Especially if you are an entrepreneur who likes to travel. Like I was recently traveling, and the entire like the entire stay, the flights, everything was covered just from the natural expenses that we already have in the business. And guess what? That's going to be a business expense as well which is going to be a tax write-off once I meet up with my accountant. It keeps your books nice and clean. Geographic footprints. This is going to be on physical locations and on a digital presence. Now, don't confuse geographic footprints with geographic location for uh, your business. This right here is more geared toward the bank or the financial institution. So with physical locations, this is banks, that establish branches in urban, suburban, rural areas to serve local customers. So example of this is Chase has branches in all major cities. So if you, you know, if you go into, let's say, Central Florida, then you're going to see a Chase in like every corner. If you go to Manhattan, you're going to see a Chase in every, in every other corner, right? That means that you can open an account essentially from wherever because you have access to a significant amount of branches. Now, the other type of what we call footprint is going to be your digital presence. Many banks extend their geographic footprint through online or, or mobile banking services, allowing them to reach customers beyond physical branches. 
This means that if you, let's say, wanted to form a banking partnership with a bank, obviously the first one, we get it. Physical, you walk in, you're, you're good. You're, like, you're golden. The second type, though, gets a little, a little I say, trickier just because the digital presence, you want to make sure that they service your, not just your state, but your city. Some credit unions, they don't allow you to open an account if you're outside of like a 50 mile radius. You can't even open it online. And so at that point, you would have to be within within their area, within their scope. But if you have, and I'll use, I think it's uh, last time I checked, it was US Bank as an example. They don't have any, like they don't, yes, they're national, but there's some states that they don't necessarily have banks in. But you can still open a checking account with them. You can still open a savings account with them digitally without walking into a branch. And so that right there serves as a data point that you can then use to, let's say, within the next two to three months, go back in and then apply for something as simple as maybe a business vehicle or you know equipment financing. Apply for something as simple as maybe a business credit card because you built up your relationship with them and it started from a digital presence. Speaking on banking partnerships, because we're kind of already down that, you know, kind of down that track. I think that this is one of the most underutilized tools that we as business owners need to be taking advantage of, especially, especially as you start to scale your business and you start to scale your working capital, because it's not just a one and done. You're not just going to get approved for, let's say, a 50K line and call it a day. You want to continue to nurture that relationship because two things is going to come from it. First is you're going to have tailored financial products that you're going to be able to tap into. This is how you get customized financial products that suit your business's needs, such as business accounts or investment options, or again, funding options that maybe it's, I'll give you an example. 